tonight. One. Amen. We got one. one. Let's just rest it. Amen. He's one. wonderful. Though our Lord is wonderful tonight, Amen. and it's so good to see you here in the house of the Lord. And we just want to get right in and worship him tonight. I hope that you came to, to give him honor and praise. Could we stand to our feet and just thank him for this opportunity? It's a grand opportunity to worship the Lord. Father, we thank you tonight. For another opportunity, Lord, another chance to be able to come and worship you, Lord. We pray, God, tonight that you would meet with us in this service, Lord. Move in our hearts and lives, Lord, and we'll praise you for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Page 306. I have the news to bring, and that, that is why I sing. All my joy with you I'll share. I plan to take a trip in the good gospel ship and go sailing through the air. I'm gonna take a trip in the good gospel ship and I'm going far beyond the sky. take a trip after a while praise God on that good old gospel ship we have a lot of comparisons and we look at this and look at that we say how this is going to be how that's going to be I'm telling you from what I can read in the word of God and that's what I've got to go by the word of God it's going to be a grand and glorious place that we're going to that place called heaven if we didn't believe it then why waste the time? If we didn't believe that Jesus died, if we didn't believe that Jesus shed his blood, if we didn't believe that he rose from the grave on the third day, then what are we doing here? Hallelujah. I'm telling you tonight, I know that he did it. I believe it. I trust it in my heart. Some people have said, well, how do you know that? Because I know what he's done for me. I know what he's done for me in my life. Hallelujah. I know what a difference he made in me, and I know there was no one else. As hard as Sarah has tried through the years, to, after 27, to make changes, let me just stop right there. The Lord's done things that no one else has been able to do, the Spirit of God. And I do appreciate the Lord tonight. And it is an opportunity of a lifetime to be included in his family it is an, uh, uh, an awesome privilege to be able to come to the house of the Lord when we, we have the doors opened up. It's an opportunity of a lifetime to serve him, and I'm thankful tonight that he gave me that opportunity. Do we have a prayer request in the house tonight? Brother Michael, I forgot this morning, he sent me a text right before service and asked us to remember him. Brother Michael Mooney, pray for him. Anybody else tonight? Joel, let's remember him. Jim Stewart, Sister Sarah said. Right. 
Let's remember this family tonight. Yes. Mark needs prayer. He's not going to ask. I'll ask for him. Uh, for about two or three weeks, he's had numbness, I think, from his elbow all the way down. And Dr. Olson said if he doesn't get better, he's going to need to get an MRI done. So y'all remember him in your prayers. Pray for this service tonight. Amen. Amen. Do you remember Darlene, his back and his feet problems? And then I was thinking, I've been praying lately, and I'd say, Lord, now you're no respecter of persons. And if you made a new creature out of this one and that one, and I just begin to name people in this community that I know that God has made a new creature out of. Right. He has no respect of persons. If he'll make a new creature out of them, he'll make a new creature out of him. Yes. And I'm just believing God, Amen. most of all, for his salvation. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Never give up. Hallelujah. Never give up. All right, let's take these needs to the Lord. Pray for this service tonight. Father, we do thank you that we can come tonight before you, Lord, with prayers. Lord, that you know what the needs before they're even asked tonight. And we pray, Lord, that you would minister to them. Oh, Lamb of God, I pray for Don Ray tonight that you'd move in his back and his body, in his feet with a sugar problem. I pray for Brother Mark tonight, God, that you'd touch his body and you see the need. Lord, for this sister tonight, God, for this son, hallelujah. Oh, for this family tonight that has a child that's home. We pray, God, that you'd find them, give them closure tonight. And, Lord, hold them up in a time tonight like this. We ask you to do it in the name of Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. Sometimes I feel his courage and faith by
Lord tonight. I can't think of a better place in all of the world to hide than in the Lord. Amen. He is a hiding place tonight for those that need a place to hide. He's a shelter tonight for those that need a shelter. He's a healer tonight for those that need healing in their bodies. You see what I'm saying? He's everything that we could possibly need in this life. Amen. That's what Jesus is. He's our everything. Ushers, would you come tonight and receive our Sunday night tithes and offerings? Go ahead, Brother James, and ask God's blessing on this offering, if you would, please. God is awesome. He can move mountains, keep me in the valley, hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. Heals me when I'm broken, strength when I've been weakened, forever He will reign. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley, hide me from the rain. My God is awesome, heals me when I'm broken, strength when I've been weakened, forever he will reign. My God is awesome, 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 awesome. Awesome, awesome, he's awesome, my God is awesome, Savior of the whole world, giver of salvation, by his stripes I'm healed, my God is awesome, today I am forgiven, his grace is why I'm living, praise his holy name. Awesome, 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 he's awesome, he's mighty, 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 he's He's great. 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 He's awesome. Awesome. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength when I've been weak. Forever he will reign. My God is awesome. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. While Mark's coming, I'm going to say a short little word of testimony, which sometimes, you, sometimes you're afraid to say stuff because you think the devil will try to put something back on you. But tomorrow will be four weeks, and y'all know how I've had trouble with my heart racing and all this, but... I have not taken a beta blocker, and I didn't just cold turkey quit it, but I think I told a few of you here, but I was praying one night when I was having a little episode. My hands was all knotted up and hurting and couldn't hardly walk, shuffling my feet like Grandpa used to do. And 
I was like, Lord, just give me a word. And then Mama was sick at the time. I said, well, Lord, just give me a word from me and Mama both. And I don't know scriptures like I should. I had to ask the Lord to let me turn to stuff because I can't flip to stuff like Mama can. But anyway, I knew it was God because I opened up the Bible and said, let me just turn to something. Give me a word. To, give me a word I can stand on. So I opened up my Bible, and it was in Zephaniah 3 and 19. And I don't go to Zephaniah. I don't know about y'all, but that's not one of the books that I just normally read. But it said, Behold, at the appointed time, I will undo all that afflict thee. So I was like, well, thank you, Lord. So I've not had an episode, and Lord knows the devil might try to put one on me tomorrow, but I'm still standing on his word that he is undoing all that afflicts me. And I know that most of y'all here have prayed and prayed for me. And I was telling my cousin when I went to Missouri the other day that he was talking about, you know, he knew about tachycardia. And I said, yeah, I said, the fastest I ever remember my heart rate when they told me about it was like 180 so I'm just giving God praise because other night it was 77 with no medication so amen she ain't through yet either amen. we are glad that you're here tonight uh, this is a week, Memorial Day weekend we always start to say it's the start of summer and we really forget Memorial Day weekend is to honor our soldiers that have fallen. And I uh, got a little video, Brother Randy, if we can get that up. She's like, maybe, might. But we're going to watch a little video that I saw on YouTube this morning or this afternoon to honor our soldiers that have fallen. Go ahead, Brother Randy.
forget the cost of freedom. I don't know if you ever think about it, Brother Ray, but I do. What if we lost World War I? Where we'd been? What if we'd lost World War II? Where we'd been? But it's because men and women died for the freedom of our country. They died for people they didn't even know. But they was willing to give their life for freedom. And I know tomorrow we'll be busy doing our things, but there'll be a lot of mamas and daddies and children and husbands and wives. It'll be a remembrance that they're lost, their, their companion or their dad or their, their mom tomorrow. So just wanting to keep us in focus that tomorrow is a holiday that we remember what freedom's all about. Amen. There's one in the Bible that I want to talk about tonight, and Isaiah talks about him back in Isaiah 40, and chapter number 40 of the book of Isaiah, and verse number 3. Isaiah prophesies this, and Isaiah 40 and 3 says, The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert and a highway for our God. Isaiah prophesies that John the Baptist is going to be the one that is the forerunner for Christ. In Matthew chapter number 11, and verse number 11, Jesus Christ says this about John the Baptist. He says, Verily I say unto you among them that are born of a woman that have not raised greater than John the Baptist. And I want to tell you, if you want to example uh, be an example or, or have a pattern for your life. Be a soldier like John the Baptist. Be a soldier like John the Baptist. You know, John was the forerunner for Christ. He had a big congregation. Christ shows up, takes them away from him, but he didn't quit. He didn't quit. He didn't quit preaching, says Sarah. He kept on preaching right on. Yeah, he still had a congregation, but a lot of them started following Christ. So let's pray. Father, tonight, God, as we remember the soldiers of our nation, God, that has gave our, their life for our freedom, Lord. There's patriarchs in this Bible, God, that has gave their life for what's right and what's wrong. And I'm asking you, Father, for the next few moments to help us minister the Word of God. We're believing and trusting your power, your hand, and your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Isaiah writes about John the Baptist being the forerunner of Christ. And Christ comes and John the Baptist, he baptizes him. And he gets on over and John the Baptist, Jesus is talking about how great he is. And you're talking about a soldier. He, he was a soldier. He was a man that gave his life because of what was right. I don't know if you know the whole story about John the Baptist, but John the Baptist in Matthew chapter number 14 was put in prison. He's put in prison because of preaching the gospel. He's put in prison because he was doing what was right. And it says at the time of Herod, going to verse number 2, and he said to the servant, this is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead. Therefore mighty works to show forth themselves in him. For Herod had laid hold on John. And bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother's, Philip's wife. For John said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. And we, when he had, would have put him to death, he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before and pleased Herod. Whereupon he promised with all the oath to give her whatever she would ask for. And, and, and she, being before instruction of her mother, said, Give me the head of John the Baptist on a platter. I want to tell you tonight, there was none no greater than John the Baptist. He was a soldier in God's army. Just like the soldiers that died in World War I and World War II, they've been showing the World Wars on the History Channel. I have, have not got to watch any of them yet. They've been showing the battles and the Battle of Normandy, the great battle that when our soldiers went upon that, that place, that they were shot down. Most of them was killed before they ever got on land. Said it was one of the most bloodiest places that you could ever be. I've heard of t people going there and visiting that place that you can still smell the odor of death that's there. And I know as when we was in Germany, we were stationed in Germany. I never did go to Outspitz. 
But they, they say when you go there where all the Jews was killed, they was murdered, you could smell the odor of death as you begin to enter that place. There's been a lot of people die, not just for freedom for us in America, but for the freedom of this word of God. There's been a lot of patriarchs that have, have died, have, have gave their life, men and women of God, have gave their life on the mission field, have gave their life fully devoted to Christ and to make a difference. See, people make a difference when they become a soldier. And when I, when I became a soldier in the United States Army in 1984, my life changed. I never saw the flag like I saw it after I went through basic training uh, in Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. When they played the national anthem and when that flag rose, it made a difference. It made me have pride in, in the world that I serve, the land that I serve. Didn't have that before I, before I went and but after I went, I, I kind of understood. I had a feeling of, I'm a soldier now. I'm here to protect this country. And through those years, God has changed the direction of my path. And now I'm a soldier for Christ, giving everything I got to try to change this world. That's what soldiers do. They try to change. They try to make an impact in this world. I've, I've tried to contact some of the people that I was in service with and they, War has been, I told Darlene, I said, I'm glad I got out when I did because we have been in war since 1990 on and off, and we're still in war today. I would have spent the last part of my service years, Brother Ray, either in a, in a, in a different place, but I'm glad that I didn't have to do that. But there's soldiers still dying today because of freedom and trying to have freedom for other countries. We have policed, we have tried to police this world that we live in. With a, with a cost, we had many a soldiers to die in Vietnam, and we left there, and it was, seemed like it was a lost cause, but never a life is given for a lost cause because freedom is a price that you had to buy. It, it's not free. Freedom's not free. It costs something. Salvation is really not free because it costs Jesus Christ, his life, that we could be saved. It costs something. It don't cost us nothing, but it costs something. And I want to tell you tonight, John the Baptist was one that gave his life for preaching the gospel. See, all he did was tell the truth. He spoke out the truth, and it cost him his life. It might get where we begin to speak out the truth. It cost us something. But I want us to remember tomorrow's Memorial Day. I want us to remember that there's men and women have gave their life that we can have freedom in America. We brought freedom to other countries, and I, I know that, but I want to I want to finish you up on this note. This Bible is the most important tool you have. It, it, is, your, it is your weapon. It is your sword. It's everything that you got. And I want to tell you, we need to learn everything we can about this Word of God. There's a lot in here that we don't know, and there's a lot that we need to know. I'm telling you, there's a time that the, we're going to be faced. If, if the Lord tarries, there's going to be some things come down our path that we're not used to, some things that's going to change. I can go ahead and tell you, they have already passed it in, the, in, our, in our Congress, in our Senate. Uh, in July, our money is going to change. Our money is going to change. It ain't, a dollar ain't going to be a dollar anymore. And it's, it, the law starts in July. I don't know how long it's going to take to implement it, but our life is fixing to change as we know it in America. I just want you to be aware. You're going to have to become a soldier of this Bible. You're going to have to begin to carry the Word of God. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to start depending on God again. We don't have to depend on the Lord very much. I'm telling the truth. We're not like a third world nation. When I went to Honduras on, a, on the mission trip, when they didn't have anything, no electricity, no running water, they, all they had was a place to stay in, and it was mostly pallets and cardboard boxes all put together with some tin on top. We don't know nothing about that. But it could happen here. It could happen here. We need to become soldiers of Christ. What builds churches, what builds communities is people becoming soldiers of Christ. He tells us in Ephesians that we need to put on the armor of God. And when we begin to put on armor of God, it begins to change our life. As a soldier in the army, I used to hate wearing that old... Uh, we st I started out with a steel pot. Brother Ray did too. And over time, they changed it to a Kevlar helmet. Supposed to be better. But it wasn't. Because there was a many a night I took a bath in that steel pot. 
because we didn't have no running water. We was out in, out in the middle of nowhere, and all, all we did was melt snow. We would melt snow in that steel pot and wash off and try to stay clean as we could for days and days and days. We got the other the Kevlar helmet. You couldn't do that, Brother Ray. You couldn't stick it on the stove and get it hot or build a fire under it to get your water hot. It was, it was, it was a good idea, but it, it just didn't work very well for the soldier. A soldier is equipped with things that will help him make it in life or make it in battle. And this word of God is the instructions that we need to make it in the battle that we're going to face. I'm telling you, there's some days coming, and, I, and, and the Bible says we need to look up and rejoice because our redemption draws now when all these things start happening. But it's kind of hard to do it because we live such a comfortable life. But those folks that don't live the life and don't have the luxuries that we have, they're saying, Lord, I see you coming. They're rejoicing, Brother Ray. Said, I can see the God that I serve. I can see him coming. I can see the signs of the time. And they're excited. But here in America, we're not excited. Because we have all the comforts and conveniences that at our hand. I can get on my cell phone if I don't know what a word means. I can punch it in just a few minutes and it'll tell me. I'm just as smart as the, the nearest genius in the world. Because I got all the info. It ain't here, so to Phyllis, but it's in my cell phone. I'm just as smart as anybody else. Right there. Just as smart. Darlene told me, and I hope I can get this right, what she told me uh, yesterday. We was doing some things, and she told me I had measured a board. I mean, it's just normal. And I wrote down my measurements because she was talking. And when people talk to me, when I read measurements and you got about five measurements in your head and they ask you a question brother Ray and you answer those five measurements leave you y'all have that problem so the first time I read them I got down before I get tomorrow she asked me a question so I went back measured it again got down before I get them marked out sister Brit, she asked me another question Went back up the ladder the third time. I wrote them down on the wall up a real big where I could see them from, from, the, from the ground. Then I went back over there. And even though I wrote them down, I got over there to measure. She asked me another question. Had to go back over and look up on the wall, see what it was. About four times I had to make because she was steadily talking to me. And, and then she looked over and she said, 94 and five or 94 and three quarters or something. She said, that's a long ways. She said, I don't understand how you know how to do all that. I said, well, I said, life wouldn't be as hard as it is if these engineers would stick with simple math. Amen. Brother Ricky knows what I'm talking about. A plus B equals C ain't nothing but one, two, three, basically. But see, she thought that was really something that I could marry and cut that out and it fit perfect. But because I do it all the time, it's no problem. But if somebody that don't do it, she's never done it, so it would take her three months to put that one board up her fit. Well, it's the same way with our relationship with God. If we don't have much relationship with Him, when He speaks to us, we have no idea what to do. And He still speaks. He still talks to our heart. He still tries to make soldiers out of us. To change people's lives. I'm telling you, we got, a, we, got a, we got a battle in front of us and we need to be prepared for it. See, I'm starting to get, I get asked a lot of questions and now it's no problem because I got this here. Somebody can ask me a question. If I don't know where it is, Brother Ray, all I got to do is hit Google, punch it in. It'll tell me where it's at in the Bible, what Scripture it is, and it'll tell me the Scripture. We got every tool at hand. Well, Brother Mark, I don't know how to use all that. Well, be smart and learn all the Bible. Every Scripture, everything. But there's no excuse is what I'm saying that we can't share the gospel of Jesus Christ when people ask us something. Wednesday night, the young people out, some of the young people asked me some questions. And I didn't have the answer where it was in Scripture, so we just got on Wi-Fi in the gym. We pulled it up. It was right there in front of us. 
and he explained it all to us. We have the capabilities, just like our military has the capabilities of doing everything that they need to do or want to do. We have the capabilities. God has given us the technology. He has given us the things that we can reach this world if we want to become a soldier and be active. See, when I got out, I become an inactive soldier. I was an inactive soldier for four years. I signed an eight-year contract. Four years, I was active. You know what active means? That I was there. I was doing something. I, I did it for four years. Then when I got out, I was inactive. That means I come to the house, and I hope they would never call me back. I didn't have to go in. I didn't have to do anything. I was just inactive. You know, when I got to thinking about that, Brother Andy, there's a lot of inactive Christians. We just here. We, 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 we're still on the soldier part. We know what to do. We've been trained. We've been to Sunday school. We've been to church all our life. But we as inactive as, as an inactive soldier. We know how to put on the uniform. We know how to march. We know how to sing the right songs. But we're not doing it anymore. We're inactive. We got all the skills. We got all the qualifications. But we've took the time that we've quit being an active soldier. We went on inactive duty. And God's calling us back. It is time to get back active as a soldier of Jesus Christ. Stand with me tonight. That's about as simple as I put it is Memorial Day weekend. I know you got a lot planned tomorrow, but I ask you one thing to do tonight. Let's play, pray tonight in this service for those mamas and daddies and those children that has lost their, their soldier. Because there'll be a lot of hearts broken. There'll be a lot of people that go to the graveyard tomorrow to visit, to the memorials, to visit of the soldiers, the, the, the daddies that have died, the mamas that have died. Let's pray for our nation. Let's pray for our nation. We still got soldiers in Afghanistan. Let's pray for them. And let's pray for these mamas and daddies and these children that God gives them a peace. Let's come around tonight. Let's pray. Let's lift up the name of Jesus. Let's become a soldier, an active soldier for Christ. skies for amber waves of gray for purple mountain majesty above the fruit gray America America God shed His grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Oh, beautiful.
Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. We got service Wednesday night. Come and be a part of that. We're going to try. 